guys, Mr. Klein here with our second of three lessons on working machines. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about simple machines, in particular, the inclined plane, the wedge, and the three types of levers. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So, puppies, yeah. Oh, the cute little puppies rolling in the wagon. Okay, what's going on right here isn't just something for you to watch instead of ignoring what I'm talking about. Rather, we're looking at a scientific principle having to do with simple machines. Okay, simple machines can make work easier, but sometimes our machines can be way more complicated than they should be. This kind of machine is what we call a Rube Goldberg machine. And Rube Goldberg machines are named after a cartoonist and engineer named Rube Goldberg. And what he did was he wrote comics that increase that showed all these complicated devices that do simple tasks. Right here, the dog food just gets knocked over and poured for the dog to eat it. Of course, you could have just picked up the dog food and poured it yourself. But why do that? We do not have puppies and tennis balls everywhere. Okay, so before we get into simple machines, let's do a brief segue and let's talk about mechanical advantage. Okay, like I said, we want mechanical advantage we want our machines to work really well but how much better is it to use a machine rather than do it ourselves well that's why we can determine the mechanical advantage or the number of times a machine multiplies the input force you can determine the mechanical advantage of a machine by using this equation mechanical advantage equals the output force divided by the input force or f out divided by f in okay so out divided by in and the number of times that is, is the mechanical advantage. So let's go ahead and let's look at a sample problem. Haley has a lever. She inputs 500 newtons of force on one end of the lever. On the other end, the lever lifts the box with 1,000 newtons of force. What is the mechanical advantage of the lever? Well, what we'll do is we will sub uh, put our formula. Mechanical advantage equals output divided by input. What we then do is substitute. Output force was 1,000 newtons. The input force is 500 newtons. We divide the two and get a mechanical advantage of two. There's no unit, okay? Rather, it's just telling you how many times the output is compared to the input. Now, sometimes it can be less than one, okay? So the output is less than the input, but what happens is that goes over a distance, okay? Uh, if you remember, force times distance is work, okay? So it's okay if the mechanical advantage is less than that, and sometimes the mechanical advantage is equal to one. In other words, for every newton of force you put into the machine, like in the case of pulleys, that's how much you get out. So mechanical advantage is pretty useful because it actually takes into the account the reduction in the output force due to friction. As a result, that number I got, that Haley's uh, lever gives two times uh, the output than it does the input, is due to the multiplication of the force. So what you get is an exact number. So with that out of the way, let's talk about simple machines. Now, whenever we talk about simple machines, we think about stuff like this. Obviously, dudes jumping around on a seesaw, okay? And that's the first simple machine we usually think of. We usually think of a lever or a simple machine consisting of a bar that rotates around a fixed point. There are several different types of levers that we'll talk about in a second, but what they all have in common is a fixed point. And that fixed point is what we call the fulcrum. The fulcrum is what the lever pivots around. And levers are useful because there are several types. Some levers change the direction of the force, while others may increase the force, allowing you to lift more weight, lift more mass than what you might be able to do otherwise. So let's go ahead and let's set up our graphic organizer. We're going to be talking about simple machines. We have the lever. It's a bar that rotates around a fixed point. We'll go over some examples so you can leave that blank. And the change in work is either you're changing the direction or increasing the force, okay? So that's how it changes what you're putting into the simple machine. So let's talk about the types of levers. There's three classes, and they're depending on the location of the forces as well as the fulcrum, okay? So the order that they're kind of in determines what class of lever they are. And the first type, of course, is first class levers. Those are levers with the fulcrum between the input and output forces. That's what we saw in the first little video I had. And this, what this lever does is it changes the direction of the input force. And a good example is a seesaw. So with our elephants right here, what you have is you have the input force of the elephant going down. And once it goes down, the other elephant goes up. What stays in the same place? Well, the fixed point or the fulcrum. That's what it pivots on. Okay? So... Input, output, input, output, input, output. Okay, that is a first class lever. 
the fulcrum is between the work, okay, the input and the output. A seesaw is a great example, and it changes the direction in terms of the work, okay? So let's go ahead, and we have that written down. Let's talk about the second part, the second class levers. Those are with the output force in between the input force and the fulcrum. Now, what this does is this changes the strength of the input force being applied. In other words, if I apply less, I don't have to apply as much input force in order to lift the device up. So it makes lifting easier, like I said. A good example of this is a wheelbarrow, okay? A wheelbarrow is a great example. So if we look at our wheelbarrow right here, okay, as this dude shows his mad skills. <clears throat> anyway, uh, you have the basket. That's where you put the load in. The fulcrum is the actual wheel itself. That's what, that's what the wheelbarrow pivots on. And the input force is the guy. So what he does is he lifts it up. And as he lifts it up, because it's further away from the fulcrum, from the pivot point, and the output is in the middle, it makes it easier for you to lift up an object. So let's go ahead and write that down. The output work is between the fulcrum and the input work on a second class lever. A wheelbarrow is a great example. And the increase in the output force or decrease in the input force, either way, is the example of a second class lever. So third class lever is the final type. Those have the input force between the output force and the fulcrum. You might be asking yourself, Mr. Klein, why would I put the inputs in between the fulcrum and the output force? Well, what this does is this increases the speed of the output force or increases the output force. A great example is something that you swing like a hockey stick or a baseball bat. So if we look at this slow motion, 3,271 frames per second, okay, of a Alabama Huntsville Charger hockey player taking a slap shot, the input force is the hand, the fulcrum is the other hand you don't see, and the output force is the blade of the hockey stick shooting the puck, okay? As you can see, so much input force is getting converted to output force that when the hockey stick touches the ice and comes toward the puck, it actually bends the stick, greatly increasing the output force. That's why an arm speed that might be, say, 45, 50 miles an hour, if that, at the most, when you're taking a slap shot, can output a force of anywhere between 100 and 120 miles per hour for a slap shot for the fastest shooters around. So let's go ahead and write this down, a third class lever. The input work is in between the fulcrum and the output work. A hockey stick uh, is a great example, and it increases the output force. In fact, the further away the output force is from the input force, or the closer the input force is to the fulcrum, the even faster it can get. Like, for example, a golf swing, okay? A golf swing has a whole lot of output force in comparison to even a hockey stick. Now, that's levers. Okay, levers seem pretty complicated. Incline planes are so much easier. All an incline plane is this. It's simply a sloped surface that connects a lower and higher elevation. Okay, and what happens is we use that to lift objects, whereas instead of picking it up and having to beat gravity going straight up, if we increase the distance in which the input force is put, you can use much less force. Okay, the surface supports the weight and increases the distance the input force being applied. As a result, incline planes, we use them to lift items with much less effort than picking it up directly. So a greatest example is a skate ramp, okay? So this gnarly skater dude is able to go over the ramp with much less force than he would need to lift himself directly over the mini, okay? So as the car comes up, he rides up the ramp, which gives him more distance for his input force, which allows him to get to a much higher height than he would before. Now, the incline plane, of course, is a slope surface between two points. A ramp is a great example. And an increase in distance for your input force is the change in the work. Okay, Stairs are actually a type of incline plane also. Now, the final simple machine we're going to talk about is a wedge. A wedge is actually related to a, a incline plane in that it's two incline planes put together. That's all a wedge is. It's important to remember about a wedge that it only works when it moves, okay? A wedge doesn't do anything if it's sitting there. The wedge has to move itself. Uh, a great example would be the blade of a knife. Now, if we see in this image that we're gonna watch, as we watch this knife cut the pages of a phone book, the only way the wedge pushes down and cuts the pages is if the user is pushing the knife. 
if there's no pushing with the knife, there is no cutting going on. Okay, so two inclined planes stuck together uh, is a wedge, and a knife blade is a great example and an increase in output force. So that's your lesson. Uh, we talked about three types of, of simple machines, and we also talked about mechanical advantage, which is uh, how many times more the output force is multiplied compared to the input force. We talked about levers, bars rotating around a fixed point, and the different types of levers all depend on where the fulcrum and the input and the output are all placed. Seesaws, wheelbarrows, hockey sticks are examples of levers, and an inclined plane is just a slope surface between two points that we use to lift something, like a ramp. And of course, like I said, we talked about a wedge, which is two inclined planes stuck together. So there you go. That's your lesson. And if, as always, you have any questions, please let me know, and thanks for watching.